tell me more about this boat and what you've done to make it good for offshore voyages and for living aboard? Yeah. It was originally meant to be crewed by eight people. It had 16 winches. It was completely this 80s creation. I've done a lot to make it able to shorthand sail it, so I kind of led everything back to the cockpit and simplified a lot of things that were just overly complicated, which was kind of typical of the 80s. Of course, it's a very safe boat to go offshore and things, but it's not really, I guess, meant for that. It was meant for sort of short distance offshore and around the buoy type of races. So in the interior, we kind of kept it really, really simple. It was all about simplicity and I love things that are simple and and so we kept things that way but we redid certain things like the galley which was kind of completely just non-existent when we first got the boat and made a bit of a galley. We also made a, a chart table that was just kind of a stand-up chart table before and now you can sit in it and everything's very simple. We don't have many electronics, uh, every like foot pumps and things, that, you know. No. On my last boat, we had electric pumps, and I would have to change them every couple of seasons. Yeah. And I would be like in you know some crazy place, and you're trying to get a pump, and you end up siphoning water out of your tank oh. to get you know <laughs> something. It's like no, 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 okay. And I've had these uh, foot pumps. We've had them in for five years, and they they're perfect. So you know, <laughs> can't complain. What is it like cruising with children? Like cruising, it has its highs and its lows. You know. It's nice to experience all the different places and it's a whole new way of experiencing them, of course, because to them everything is brand new and, and exciting and, and so that's really nice. It's really nice because you get to spend so much time with your children. With Caribe, I was able to not work for the first eight months of her life, and which is really nice, you know, and that's what cruising allows you to be able to do. We've both been able to spend so much time with them, which is nice. And we're all kind of, of course, in tight quarters, so so we all get to spend a lot of good time together. It can be, all, of course, more stressful because you do inevitably worry. I do, especially as the captain, you know, because you are in charge of them. So you do kind of worry about things way more than when I single hand. A bit of the lows are, are that I have a bit more sort of added stress and, and sometimes when uh, just more or less worrying about the safety of them. For the most part in passages, they're sleeping. They sleep like 20 hours a day basically when we're in passages. So they really have their kind of own routine. So the passages are okay because they're kind of stuck into their bunks, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, when we get to places, being able to explore and run around and it makes me be able to be like a kid and people don't look at me strange, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we go fishing and hunting and and just climbing around everywhere and I think it's the best thing you could ever do for kids you know sometimes people always go well I'm waiting for my kids to get a bit older and it's only gotten more difficult that they've gotten bigger you know because as they get bigger of course they have just more needs themselves you know with mm. either friends or or just they have more opinions uh, than when they're when they're small they're just happy going anywhere you know, <laughs> but um, so definitely go as young as possible and the people that they meet and the experiences I think really shapes them tremendously. Daddy, and you hide. Okay. Come. Luna, Luna. Do you fish? All the time. All the time? Yeah, like yeah. when you're underway, you're trawling? Not, not when we're underway, we're not so much here, but when we're in the Caribbean, yeah, where we could get tuna and Dorado and we were always dragging a line. Here we fish as much as we can. When we're in port, we'll, we'll fish and, and anytime, because of course we don't have a motor, sometimes we are becalmed and we will do some bottom fishing. So <laughs> we've gotten, you know, a bunch of cod and wow. yeah, we love dried fish. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, so we have, fish has always been a huge part of our diet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a refrigerator on board. So we often are kind of uh, doing things a little bit more, I guess, how they did it in the olden days. So uh, if there's any very long passages, we will often salt things. We'll buy an assortment of food and there's all different ways of storing different types of food so it lasts the longest possible without refrigeration. Certain meats and things, and we will eat them in the beginning and then at the end of the passages get more into fish. And, you know, potatoes are, are, are good and then, you know, 
before a passage we always buy a giant bag of rice you know and that's kind of like our, our emergency food as well if you guys you have to always plan that you know basically that's all we want to eat when we're on their way rice yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly right but you know like uh, you always have to plan that if if we were to get dismasted and what is kind of plan b which you know would would be build a jury rig and then it would take us a while so you need some extra food and so you can always just eat rice you know? yeah so. wow what is it like not having an engine and do you prefer not to have an engine yeah i i think it's one of those things that has shaped the way that i sail what i like most about it personally is the way that you have to be you're forced to be in touch with what's going on with with everything what i've noticed is that people that are relying upon their engines is that you you don't need to have such a strong awareness of what are the tides what are the different patterns in the wind uh, all these different things that we are completely shaped by all the time our whole life when we are sailing or planning a passage or something is shaped around tides and winds and when we leave and you know and and we we often meet people who are like okay we're gonna leave at six o'clock and we'll arrive there at uh in two days at six you know six o'clock in the afternoon and you know uh for us it's just it's never like that we we always have a rough idea of course when we're going to arrive but you know, if it's blowing 25 knots in the harbor, we have to wait until it's a calmer period, you know. We're more aware of the shifts. And, and so for me, I love it because I'm really into the sailing part of it. I love to sail and for me, that is the challenge. And for me, that's what sailing is. It's going from point A to point B with a sailboat. It's like a chess game trying to arrive under sail, you know. Yeah, wow. So you don't have plans on someday powering the boat? Or? I was thinking about putting an electric engine in this boat and it was mainly for resale. We would like to get a bigger boat, so as you get a bigger boat it definitely gets more difficult to to not have an engine. I would have a, an electric engine or something in a bigger boat, just something kind of small that that uh, is just sort of for getting in and out of the harbors or maneuvering around would, would be nice. People often ask us, like, well isn't that dangerous? And, and it's, I always thought of it a bit of a funny question, but of course it's, I mean, it makes sense why people ask you that, but I believe it's much safer wow. um, because you don't take any type of chances that many people will, you know. For example, if you take the Faroe Islands, you're, you, if you have an, a good engine, you're able to power against the currents and, and these sort of things, which is, which is fine, but then if the engine does have a problem, then you're you're in a big problem and we've seen that many times in different places where you know maybe people are entering an anchorage and it's it's pretty windy and we've seen it where their engines have had problems and they just don't have enough time and are blown up on the reefs and and we would just have to wait mm -hmm. you know so in that sense it does make it quite safer you're you're kind of more conservative i guess wow how about like power and electricity what are your electrical power demands and yeah. How, how, um, how do you fulfill them? Well, we, we don't have many uh, electrical demands. Our biggest one, of course, is our autopilot. And we have a 200 watt uh, solar panel that covers most of that. Everything is LED lights, yep. so, so that's good. And there's no like radar, which radar is a big kind of consumption device. We just keep everything very, very simple, which is nice because you get an ability to enjoy the places you're at instead of like working working on the boat you know? yeah, 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 <laughs> which absolutely. is good you know so how do you afford your cruising life recently we've uh we've gotten a sponsor a, a corporate sponsor dot is it's uh dot is and it's a uh, top level domain so you're able to register a domain name under it so they are basically sponsoring us for exposure which is common to do in the racing world which is great because it allows us to go to many places and things like this but before i was always working on working on boats so we'd arrive in a place and i would uh just basically go walk the docks and talk to people and see what they what they need and do a lot of rigging on boats and, you're a rigger yeah rigging splicing I was always able to get work here and there and when we would have enough we would leave and go to the next point and it was kind of this constant nomadic uh, get hunter gatherer type of hunter gatherer yeah it was it was a, it was hunt instead of hunting and gathering of food it was hunting and gathering of of money, money. and work and then 
when you had enough and uh, you know sometimes money was really tight and yep. other times we, we would have you know more you know so we were able to you know go out to eat and things like this and sometimes we went many many months without going out to eat you know is that how you do it do you stop in one place and then work until you've saved enough that's how i've done it for for nine years basically wow. so this only the recently have we got we've gotten the sponsor but yeah before then we would have basically an idea of somewhere where we'd want to stop and uh, we knew how much money we'd have and roughly how much we spend a month. So we'd be like, okay, we have to be there uh, in six months, you know. Yeah. And then when we get there, then it would be just, you know, I would just go immediately and just go around and just start talking to people, you know. Walking the docks and talking and people, you know, you get things here and there. And, yep. and so, wow. so, yeah. Have you always been a marine professional? Have, Ye, not always. Else? When I was younger, I worked in restaurants. When I arrived in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, when I first left, um, I mean, I, I did work on boats then as well, but, but I would also work in restaurants as a cook. And, you know, so I would go and to restaurants and see, you know, if anybody needed any help or anything like this. So You know how to cook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any words of advice for someone who's dreaming of following in your footsteps and doing something similar to mm -hmm. what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole nother segment. No, yeah. no, no, no um, I just think that we do things so completely differently that I think my, my biggest word of advice would be just don't. There's always so many opinions on the way that you should do it, and there is no right way for every type of person. So everybody does things differently. Um, keep things as simple as possible, because for me, it's like I rather I want to be sailing and I want to be hanging out on, on the shore. Those are my prime uh, reasons. So I don't want to be sitting working working on something you know, doing some sort of repair and, and the simpler you can do it, not only is it inexpensive that way, but uh, you just get more time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this whole thing that that you have to be well off and rich and, and all this stuff to have a boat and start sailing is, is really BS because um, I don't come from any type of money and, and never had, we never had very much money and we were always scrounging around, but if you're willing to if you're willing to do the work, then it's a great economical way to live. And um, go out, just get experience with smaller boats. And oftentimes people think that sailing is like this. They have a romantic thought about what sailing is, you know. So it's good to know that it's that that's like 3% of the time. <laughs> Occasionally it's romantic, but for the most part, it's sort of like a full contact uh, sport, you yeah. know, in a way. But um, I don't know if you enjoy that sort of thing, then. Yeah. and go for it, you know, just go for it. Don't worry about it so much, you know. Get experience, and and the only way you can do that is getting a small boat and going out on days and learning how to sail, and you know, getting beat up here and there, and breaking things and fixing it. And then when you feel like you're comfortable enough in your abilities, then get a bigger boat and go somewhere wherever you want to go. You know, it doesn't have to be as complicated as everyone makes it you don't have to have you know a million dollars in in electronics and and all this stuff it just means you, you have to just keep a better watch and mm -hmm. things like this wow you are living proof yeah yeah it's true i mean it's true you know i mean it, yeah it's great to have all these nice things you know it's like possibly one day i'll like to have all those nice things you know but but for now it's not a People, that's the thing too, is people often forget is like for for hundreds and hundreds of years we've been sailing around the world for in very, very basic type of boats and basic technology and the most difficult part of course was always with weather and so now with today's weather forecast it's like, they're un it's unbelievable, that, that's for me is the single most important and biggest change in technology has been with weather. Yeah. The weather is just incredible how accurate it is nowadays. Are you able to get weather when you go offshore? Yeah, we, we do have a satellite phone. Oh, you do? Yeah, we have a satellite phone and we're able to download the, the grid file. Oh, on, wow. On longer passages. So you know exactly so, what's going on. Yeah, 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 exactly, which is good. But this is only, this is fairly recently that we've kind of mm -hmm. had that, that mm -hmm. type of, of thing, so. 
you know. And I think it's good for people too when they when they when you first start off. You start off very basic, and you end up learning a lot more. I mean, we started off; we didn't even have GPS. You know, the whole Pacific. Is, we sailed old fashioned with sextant and uh, dead reckoning, and you learn a lot more. You learn a mm. lot about paper charts, and I think all this stuff is kind of it's important to learn. Now, of course, we we do it all electronically, electronic charts and things. But it's often, I think, very important to kind of know those those older skills because they they do sort of transcend into the electronic mm -hmm. charts in terms of maybe the way you look at them or plan a route or something like this mm. and even not having an engine or radar or advanced navigational electronics start out that way and learn yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with starting out that way i, I don't think so uh, i don't i don't really feel that it's any less safe either i mean i think oftentimes if you look at many 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 uh accidents that happen out of the sea i think that you could possibly uh you know say that it that it come came from cer some sort of complacency with with some sort of uh, technology mm. uh, which is not i'm not against technology at all it's just that you always have to be careful when when you're relying on more technology because it inevitably makes you more complacent it's just natural if you don't have AIS, you don't have radar, you don't have, uh, you know, all these type of things, most likely then you're like, you're on deck. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you're out there going, okay, I'm looking around for anything. And if you have those things, you know, you're probably not on deck. Right. You know, you're probably down below, which is, which is fine. But it does mean that there can be areas of, you know, a gray area, you know, so, so, yeah, you never know. Do you have a favorite piece of gear? Oh, uh, my foul weather gear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dry suit in this boat. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. You... exactly. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think other than foul weather gear, um, the boat in total, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I have a precise type of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The double-handed winch handle. Aye. That's, I like that one. Aye. That's a good one. Everyone should have those. Double-handed winch yeah, handle. Yeah, we can really aye, aye, know, aye. get on there. It's a good one. What do you love the most about being a cruiser? About the lifestyle? Like I love most because it allows me to to sail to all the different areas. Like for me, is 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 sailing based. I love to sail and and. And so for me is sailing as much as possible but also then after that is the freedom that it allows you in terms of in terms of work your life is so simple and and you use such little money that that allows you to be able to go uh, a long time uh, without working so in the last 10 years that, that I've been sailing, I've averaged six months a year working, where we would get to a place and I would work for four months and we would leave and you know so and and then we would be out and sailing around and not using much money and so that portion I really like because you're able to spend you're able to enjoy the y your life really you know I've always had I guess a different outlook on life and that was uh, you know I, just, I don't understand why people don't don't enjoy their lives you know they they mainly will work their entire life so that one day they'll be able to enjoy it but then they're kind of too old to enjoy it and so it was interesting when I, when I was first starting of course you get a bunch of resistance from people saying you're crazy or that will never work or how are you going to make money and da, da 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 and it was great it was always the oldest people it was always the people that were like you know had maybe you know under 10 years left on their life that were always like you know you're doing the you're doing fantastic you're doing the right thing you know because and they had the right perspective on it because now they've lived their entire life and they know now what's important, you know. And it really is important. What's important is to enjoy your life. You're, you're only here once, you know. Yeah. That's it. And you could you could work your whole life and you go out to get your mail in the morning and, and you could die. I mean, that's just the way it is. So you never know. So you just have to, you have to enjoy and, and that's it. Yeah. I think that's the greatest piece of advice yeah it's yeah. just the one though it's true yeah wow. just enjoy life yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm really blown away by the whole the whole thing that you're doing it's incredible um can i 
Did you? Yeah, go. Did you make this? Dude, go wherever. <laughs>